with quickness of body and sharpness of mind. How have you paid for these gifts? With innocent blood. Yours is a predatory profession. The business of butchery. You've stolen many a life to fill your purse. Now you will... You swore sinew and soul to serve God and the order of the Templar. You were born to be swift and strong. What did you do with your gifts, Duelist? You squandered them on self -love. Why do the keen of mind seek to satiate their curiosity in darkness and depravity? Swift and silent, you stood. Do you think you are savage enough to face the born with you swore sinew and soul to serve God? Do you think you are savage enough to face the land of the damned, Marauder? We offered you truth, yet still you clasped your superstitious lies. We offered you service, yet you wasted your strength and defiance. Great last offers you something else. An education in true savagery. The dead should remember their place.
autonomous cars on the trains that are in the city stars. Douche. Test. Test. Should be okay. Better? Uh, 
Alright, good. Finished eleven. You mother. Because I don't have anything else on here actually. Fucking nine barrel. I mean, I would be streaming other ones. Well, I would be streaming the Phasmophobia if you were at home. Or Dead by Daylight or whatever, but you know. You know? Hmm. Yeah, but I won't be on anything tomorrow. Why are all of these weapons fucking shit? <laughs> nah, I like to take a break from games every now and then. Yeah, that's all I seem to do is take breaks from it. Waiting to like stop properly like gaming again until I get my desk. You only don't like it because of um you got a hang of it easily. Oh my god, what the fuck are these people? Oh, you muppets are over here, right? -o. Yeah, now nah, we are getting a few updates on it. There are a few games that I've looked into. I was looking at Steam, I was... You don't like it, uh, I didn't work. I think it's cool. I've liked Supernatural side of stuff for a long time. So. Hey, I'm lost level, I can finally change my archetype. <laughs> There's no version of the game. Why? Mm -hmm. What are you mean? Not? Untold true story behind the mice. Okay. I don't even think I've got Fortnite, bro.
That requires money, doesn't it? Hmm? I believe it does. When I exhaust my hands. I don't even have a lot of space left. Why do I have chest? That was 10 gigabytes. Oh god. Yeah. Requiring money that I do not because I am not liking which I was. I wasn't working, that would make my, yeah, library. I'm still Sims. Our Bioshock shit. Fortnite? Maybe? Now, this is enough storage, and by storage, I was meaning connecting it to my portable hard drive, but you know, it won't connect. Which is fucked. Wait, how much is Minecraft on here? Yeah. Is Minecraft even on the Epic Game Store? Yeah, mothers. Micro polishing blade you got from uh, some act of mothers. And um, they eat good stuff. As if. Really good. It's not. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Oh, that is bullshit. Mothers, you want to throw more at me? I'm quite happy. It's really good. I'm very impressed with it. No, I was. Um, I actually planned to. It was just. And, uh, up for the next, and, uh, the I don't even. Here, I don't think this is an S. M. Dot Two SSD. Have a look at that, guys. Sure. Well, everybody. I'll have to have a look. Where's your message? Oh, for sake! People, stop messaging. I don't want to buy any of your bullshit graphic design when I can do it myself. Over that, actually, I'll come here. You can see it's as good as a mirror. I'm not trying to put it back in that paint. But um, that's me sitting there, and that's what we call bed. Have a look at that. You can see right down to the back of the shed. You can see me in mid world down the back there, right down to the corner. That's bed. All right, guys. So uh, if you're at uh, got the car show here in Madura on the weekend, come and check out the uh, Mako. And when, when we grow up to Motorex as well, uh, we're not taking the car, we're just going down to Motorex. But guys, if you want to check out a good paint job, when you're at Motorex, have a look at the paint, have a look at the reflection, have a look at the depth that they get in their paint. Have a look at, like, look at that. That is Mine's a solid state drive. I don't think it's an M.2. Just have a look when you go to MotorX and have a look to see if there's that much depth in their paint. Because, mate, that makes your paint job dip. That is good. Well, I'm saying that's more But anyway, there you go. I want it to stay on. It's set up like that for a reason. There you go, that's it. That's all the back of the shed. There it is. So then I can like continue going through a reading on that, but yeah. I'll change it eventually. So after a while, actually. A good example of Bill and Frank is my going to be. So let's walk back up to it. Get back here. There you go. Look at that. Oh, it's on the new beach. I'm watching how solid state drive for laptops. Good morning. Excellent. Now, is it flipped out?
Yeah. I don't believe. Yeah. Right. HP Victors. Opponents. Let's go. What True terabyte SSD. Yeah, I'll look into it. Bye, buddy.
Yeah, it's a crime. What do you know? I'm not afraid of the war you've come to wage against my sins. I'm not okay, but I can try my best to just pretend. So you wait me out, or will you? Well, dead interesting. You serious? What's that? I am doing some suggestions in your one as well. You're just on my face.
You are no I get drunk Chase is playing too. You good? I'll admit I was wrong. What else can I say, girl? Can you play my head and not my heart? I was drunk, I was gone. They don't make it back right. Would you rescue me?
Pretty much any paint project requires some level of wet sanding and polishing, even if you know you're just going for a factory finish and you need to just mix yeah. in, you know, yeah. you know, just any little bit of dust and stuff that's going in, or you know, things like that. It's not, it's not the best, and not every job unless it's like leaving dust in the city, right? Sometimes you want to feel better. Or you got, you know, got some product problems, or you know, your guy set up wasn't perfect that day. It came out a little dry, maybe, or whatever, right? So you just, you know, just gotta polish it up, make it look nice. Um, I'm gonna walk you guys through how to do, like, kind of a quicker method of wet sanding polishing. Um, a couple tips and things that I've learned throughout the years that could make a little bit smoother so you don't have any mistakes. Um, I'll show you guys some products I use that make it real fast. And, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. We got this, uh, okay. For this one lightning we just sprayed. Um, it doesn't have like any texture in it. It's, it's a little bit hard to see the little hole and stuff because it actually has a coat of dust on it before I started shooting this and I remember just wiped it off with the bare hand so it's all scratched now. Um, but there's really no texture in it. It's really, uh, super flat. Um, it just had a few nibs. And I went ahead and sanded those smooth. But I'll show you guys my process going off here on the nails. I got like one or two more that I want to buy a lot. And then, yeah, we're going to start with the I'm not going to see, but I've got one little bit that I can describe here. Um, I'm going to just kind of use the illustration for this for the video. Uh, the main is only, you know, I'm not going to take a lot of it now. I will actually file these flats and see if they will normally not smooth enough. Um, these ones that I did here are a little bit more engineers. Um, so, but I'll show you the same process I need for the working units. Um, on this new video. Yeah, so this is the process that I did for the working units. Um, so this guy is a carbide post in uh, Dynamix. Um, it's called the I've used a lot of the different nib tools, um, like the ones that have like a little kind of like almost like a saw blade type of file blade. Um, I don't like those. Um, I've used razor blade and these a lot of things. These are the best. You can pick them up for like 50, 60 bucks. And that sounds like a lot for a nib tool, but it will help save a lot of time. Because literally, all you gotta do is a little rope on the back where it's like a guy, so it props up the back side of it. 
and then you take and just run the edge of the pile up against the mid. Got a little bit of the angle. And you can see it chiseling that mid flat. And that's really all there is to it. So that mid is now saying it's smooth with the surface around it. And you can tell because it was ever so slightly starting to scratch the surface around it. The fuck is that? Yes, wait, 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 wait. The fuck is that? Sometimes I want to teeter totter a little bit, and you're really careful with the edge, doesn't give you the effect. Now that the majority of that is leveled up, we got these guys. Um, the real fifteen hundred point flat head. They got a little bit of swing in too, but they're pretty rigid. You need to get some water. We're going to take and just mist on that a little bit. And then we're going to kind of do a few circles and stuff on top of that mid. And this is going to get the last little bit. So that you can make sure you don't have a little raised spot uh, where the mid used to be. And then we're going to go ahead and do a side of the mid. And you can see the new is here right there in the center. The mile of the bone lace is doubled up, circles around it. Um, if you're going for like a factory finish, then you just want to kind of chisel the nibs flat or weave the orange peel with texture. Um, doing that method is really good for not knocking out all the orange peel, so you're going to wind up with like a weird flat spot. Um, and then the rest of it, you know, it's all like back to the orange peel. Um, this is what I normally do when I'm just doing like a blade and repair job or like something that, you know, you want to leave the texture, you don't want to make that really smooth. And I'll even, most of the time, if I have this 1500 grit, I'll use a 3000 grit um, for a square block to level it out instead. Put that one on the point and you'll be able to fill around the day. Depending on what you're doing with the project, uh, you know, like I said, you may or may not stand out, you know, mids and everything, you know, super perfect. Um, on this one, I'm going to have a wall knock down, um, about two thousand. Uh, you can have a wall knock down, and 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 you can have a wall knock down. Italy, being kind of to the whole fluid. Now we're going to polish out the paper and just kind of get everything, you know, buzzed down and smoothed out. I'm using 2000 grit. I'm still going to do the EHS. This is the M1. I'm going to do the original EHS. I'm going to do the original EHS. I'm going to do the original EHS. You can order cheaper paper and stuff, and it's still worth buying. Uh, just generally with cheaper paper, you don't get it, like a lot of gummy, so it's really worth cutting out on them. And sometimes the grip aren't as uniform, so you get a little bit heavier scratch. So you're kind of like, again, it's kind of really like a downfall of cheaper paper. So whatever the case you're going for is to dictate um, what grip you start with, and then kind of what the cheaper should be, right? So on this, I'm just going to do with like a walkthrough of how I'm going to do it faster. What's up, Galaxy? Just going to do it. Or something like that. You want to really get flat smooth. Um, there's extra steps before you get to using a DA that you have to do by hand in order to get it to really look, you know, that dead flat, super smooth finish. Um, for the sake of this video and for the sake of just what I'm doing, um, I'm just kind of... This is going to be like if someone was doing like a nice paint job, right? This isn't a show car finish, but it's kind of in between a show car finish and a factory finish, right? So 2000 grit, you're going to cut it flat without, you know, cutting it too super and too flat. Um, and it's going to get the job done without putting too heavy of a grit scratch when you get too fast. The name of the game is wet painting is clean. Everything has to be super clean and dust free. If That's you fair. Are by hand, if you get a little piece of dust or dirt something between the sandpaper and the finish, you're going to gouge the out of it and you're going to take 
quite a long to finish the project, and it's it's just not gonna you're not gonna do anything to say that. I already wiped this down with microfiber and made some detailer a couple times, and I made sure that there was nothing on the surface. Um, and then I just kind of took my bare hand over it, and I like to do that before I get started. Um, I haven't just heard of that game before. Check, right? Because with your bare hand, you can feel if there's any dust or dirt or debris or anything still just kind of showing on the surface. Um, so if any area I'm about to view, right before I paint it, I just run my bare hand over it. And I just make sure that I pick up any last little bit of dust or dirt or anything that's on there. Just another random tip before you get started. Um, I always like to take the air blower and just kind of spray the DA off with paper and everything to make sure that you know, no dust or dirt or anything's gonna fall. Because you can get dust. Like, I use the same DA for your body work and stuff. And I don't want any little chunks of dust or debris or anything to fall off the DA onto the circuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just air blower this over there, away from this, um, to just make sure that there's nothing contaminating the surface. And it's little things like that, Take a few seconds, man. Like, just do it. Save yourself a headache. Don't have some dirt fall on there. And then grind it in, and then try to take take those out with the buffer for the next three hours. So the spray detailer that we're using is by a company called 3D. Um, I believe they're out of California. Uh, all their products made in the USA and stuff. Super dope. This is their uh, body shop safe um, spray detailer. And I like using that stuff because A, um, you know, we're in like a body shop environment, right? And I don't want to be atomizing silicone and like nasty things uh, in the air that can easily get carried over and land on, you know, projects that we're working on and get fish eyes and, you know, problems like that. Um, B, when you're in the middle of wet painting, polishing, and doing all that, I don't like to use anything that has silicones and fillers in it because it can kind of lie to you, right? So you can spray that stuff on and sometimes it's got like waxy. Um, you know, residue and stuff like that that kind of artificially fills in like very minor scratches and stuff like that. And when you're doing something like this, you need the surface to look true. It needs to look exactly how it actually looks. Because there's nothing stopping you from you know, washing the car once and then all those, you know, sand scratches and swirls and stuff like that. Because you use a bunch of products that are all full of fillers and silicone and stuff like that. And then they just wash off the surface. I'm just gonna mist down a light coat of water on the surface. Uh, you can use this paper. Oh, yeah, that's too. Good. I don't like doing that. I just use water to make paper last longer, um, and it cuts a little bit easier that way. One thing to consider when you're using a DA or hand painting: um, pay attention to the shape of the panel and think about just kind of how difficult it's gonna be for you to get into certain areas, right? So like I said, this isn't a show product, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm gonna leave areas like this. We have a really tiny area right here. Um, I'm gonna leave that alone because you're not gonna be able to tell if the finish is ever so slightly different from an area like this, or maybe like ever so slightly away from the emblem here, where you're real likely to burn through and have issues. I just stay away from stuff like that. It just makes the, the polishing process go a lot faster. For something like this, on a show car, it can be a little bit more in depth. I would just say that, you know, corner to corner in every last meeting for you. Mm -hmm. First half of the paper, you can see that it's definitely not even. Uh, I had a little bit too much water on the surface at first, so the pad was kind of wanting to just float a little bit on the surface and uh, cut quite some of that. Well, I came out a little bit uneven. But that's fine. We'll just we gotta keep saying it the way. Areas like this, you can see where it's just smooth and even and flat, and there's really no glossiness coming through. 
it's kind of what you want to go for um, when you want them out, everything kind of even, right? So I'm going to keep going until I have the full surface looking like that and it's all dried off. Make sure when you're doing this that you do a little bit sanding, wipe it off, check it, a little bit of sanding. You don't want to rush through it. You don't want to just like grind down the whole section and then accidentally wind up going through your clear and land on a big old plug face that you're going to go to a edge or something. Slower is definitely faster when you're doing this type of stuff. Um, I even like to break down the panel. Like I broke this down into essentially three pieces. Um, so like this section, middle, and then the other section, um, I'll break down panels into smaller chunks and just focus on one area, get a good solution in the next section. Um, it just, again, slower is faster. Next tip, we're going to throw some 3000 grit on. You don't necessarily have to do 3000 grit. I like to though because I hate buffing. 3000 just kind of refines a little bit further, makes the buffing step go a little bit faster. Um, especially so much curves. It really helps with getting the same scratches and stuff out. We don't have as much polish you can use. And yes, sometimes I do use 5000 as well. I just don't have to right In this area, I have a lot of find out in 3000 now. Um, and generally, you don't really have much of a, a guide for this step as to like how far to actually sand it and like how long to go, aside from just kind of like manually like drying it off and taking a look at it. And, um, I sometimes we use the edges of the guide um, where it feathers into the paint because, you know, I said I kind of go beyond that edge. Um, so normally once I start to see the edge of like a 2000 grit start to disappear and it's all kind of faded, um, you know, into that 3000 scratch and, you know, I maintain a consistent speed and uh, overlap and stuff on the whole thing. So I know if one section of it is feathered out like that, then there's a good chance that the rest of it is, you know, pretty much there as well. Um, and you can even kind of see it's the difference in the gloss. Right, so like this area here already has kind of like a dull sheen to it versus over here, it looks more kind of matte and uh, not very reflective at all, right? And even through the transition here, when I do this bit in this area, you can see where the grit starts to step, you know, up to that 3,000 right on this edge here. I like to get the speed on the DA a little bit lower than most people do. Um, just because I feel like it really gives the paper time to really actually cut and do its job. And I have found that it does seem to make the paper last a little bit longer too. Um, I feel like the RPMs really kind of do mess up the grit on the surface of the paper a little bit faster. Even the speed low and just kind of moving at like a nice steady slow consistent pace does seem to actually cut it faster. with your 3000 grit once your hand is like completely numb and tingly you can't feel it anymore and that's generally how you know that you're ready to start polishing so the first step that i normally do i only use wool a lot of dudes use foam for their step one um i guess it was kind of a little old school i like the fact that the wool doesn't get hot with the foam and i do feel like it definitely cuts a lot faster um, so I just got a regular, you know, white wool pad um, for the compound on this. I'm using the 3D uh, AT85 pen. This stuff is awesome. Like when they say that it will cut the 1,000 grit scratch, this stuff will actually cut the 1,000 grit scratch. Um, a lot of compound play, like especially the 3M stuff, plays will do like a 1,200 grit. It, it won't even be like 2,000 grit. And that stuff is so full of fillers and you know, nasty stuff. 
So, I normally just do like four or five dabs on the pad. And then I like to use a little bit of water uh, when I'm buffing. I, I always felt like it makes it go a little bit faster, a little bit smoother. Um, it does make a mess though, so keep that <laughs> Both of them using the tension for the vampire. Yeah, and this is a slower is faster type deal. You're only using a buffer at around 90 RPM. Some people prefer to use a little bit higher RPM. I find that actually using it like the lowest setting you can while just kind of maintaining like a slower speed on the panel actually sometimes cuts faster than like cranking it way up and trying to just burn everything out real quick. I'll just keep going back uh, over it and just doing multiple passes essentially until the compound will stress it all up on me. The edges and the borders on the panel are all going to take a little bit more effort than the flat surfaces. Just be really aware of where your buffer pad is at when you're hitting the edges. And also be sure that you're paying attention to which way the pad is rotating in relation to the edge. You don't want to be buffing with the pad going into the corner. You want to be buffing off of the corner if that makes sense. But uh, you can see already, just with the uh, you know first pass, we already got a lot of that that two thousand three thousand grit chiseled out. We got a little bit of haze around the the borders. We're gonna take care of it. The majority of the time, when people are having problems with like their wet paint polish job, like getting the actual like mirror finish that they want. Generally, the problem comes from not spending enough time in set number one. The only thing that you should be left with when you are done with your first set is swallow. That's it. If there's any saving scratches, DA marks, um, pigtails, anything like that still left, you need to spend more time in step one because you're not going to get it out with polish. And you're not going to get it out with your final step, your glazing polish, or anything like that. If you're all the way through to you know, the final step and it's still looking hazy, you need to actually step backwards and you have to start back with the I'll be back in a second. Yeah. Sure. The next pad I'm gonna use is still a step one pad, but it's foam. And normally what I do is do all the cutting with the wool, and then I'll just do one pad with the same foam round with the foam pad. Um, just to kind of refine out the worst of the swallow mark before I go to step two. To be filler, and then just give this a uh, nice spread, and we're going to make sure that we get all of the compound off of it because we don't want this compound contaminating our step two pad. And you can see I've got step one. The thing is, they would say that we've done the version right, but at this point now, we're just going to be you know, refining the surface even further. So it would look good, like decent in the artificial light, like inside right now, but you got it outside and you know, Step two, we're just using one of these gray foam pads with the uh, little raised bit. And for step two, I like to use the little green one. But this stuff you can actually, if you're in the market for something that you see to buy, like a single product, um, you can use this as a step one and step two polish. And it does actually look well for both. I just prefer to make the way heavier cut for what I'm doing. And this stuff stays nice and like soft on the surface. It doesn't really dry up on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the full gate all at once. Um, because I can get away with it not drying up on me. Yeah. Three pack. 
after like five patent microviruses like peanuts. Like, just do it. There's no reason to not. Last step, blue foam with this step. 505. Uh, this is like a final step, color cracking blade, and it's got a little bit of paint protective stuff in it. It's not wax necessarily. You don't want to put wax on fresh paint. This will kind of get them into that period where they can start waxing. It gives you a little bit of protection when the paint is fresh. So we're just getting the last bit of that compound, this deadly white stuff. And this thing is looking pretty fresh. So the last step is to bring it outside and take a look at it. And make sure it doesn't look like a giant swirly mess. Paint the glass, we might say. To get that all cut, polished, and everything. If you're anticipating doing this on your entire car, I definitely recommend breaking it down panel by panel and just kind of, yeah. Get everything in step one, then everything in step two. Take your time, because it's worth it. There's no reason to like waste three quarters of the amount of time doing it like kind of crappy when in reality, doing it at night is not going to take that much longer and it, you know, it's totally worth it. Welcome back to the six gear drive. Today, I'm going to show how to front and repair this baby clear coat on the $350 Acura Legend. So this car came from out west, and you can see it had a hood roll off the moment of its life. The paint still looks great in the front of the hood, but then look what years of UV rays and neglect did to the rest of the hood. This clear coat isn't just faded. Parts of it have completely delaminated and flaked away. Once the UV resisting clear coat is gone, the color coat underneath begins to fade from the sun. So instead of just re-clearing, now I need to respray areas of color coat as well. The clear coat is bad on the roof too, and just really filthy in general. This car did sit for a decade before I bought it. When the clear gets these white splotchy areas, it has completely delimited from the color coat. The only way to fix it at this point is sanding off the damage clear and respraying. So the hood, fender, roof are bad. And the top of the doors. But look at the trunk. No delimiting of the clear coat on the trunk plate. I think I'll be able to bring this back with some polishing. The top surfaces soak up all the UV rays. The sides are fine. What do you think about these inky EK90 wheels? Yay or nay? I'm doing a quick check getting the baby thrift coat wet. I can still see some splotchiness in the roof. Still see it here on the fender. And of course, it's really bad on the hood. A coat of water on the paint shows what it would look like if I just sprayed clear over the existing surface. And I can see that's not going to work. There's a line here where the bra was. It's not just the clear that's faded, it's the red as well. Now that it's wet, I can tell the rest of the hood is a little more pink. Then of course, it's really faded where there's no more clear. First, let's give it a bath. Do some dish soap. If there's any wax left on here, this will take it off. Found a helper. He works hard for 15 animal crackers per hour. Now, this is what the paint's gonna look like when I'm all done. 
but you don't trust the blogger. That's good news. I bet I can bring this back without having to read there. If it looks this good with water, some kind of mold on it. The water's starting to dry, and it's back to the UV finish. I pulled in the garage where there's better lighting, and I can see all kinds of color in the paint, like this and this. So I have a whole play out here. I'm all got a spray. Use most of this in the Mustang. But any other detail spray should work as well. This has to be like 15 years old. Play bar will help you move the contamination and surface before I start working on it. Spray on some move, aka detail spray. Really love to play. Looking at maybe a two foot by two foot area. This spot isn't coming out. Let's take a look at what the play bar picks up. Look at all that grub and debris. I'll do the rest of the hood off the game. I didn't have to shrunk it. And if you look really close, focus, there's, there's all kinds of white debris stuck in the paint. And it's all over the place. Look at the black stuff again that doesn't want to come off. I don't know if it's involved a mold or no, but it's all over. Some of it came off. It just took the elbow view. That's even better. More scrub. Alright, I need the more car and get the play bar. This can all be polished out. So can this. The area under the hood are all spooky safe, but the rest of the hood are gone. That's the end. That was a quick little hour game. I guess I don't need that anymore. Kind of wish it was longer. Got into that very quickly. I don't really have anything else. You can see there's a night and day difference on the here too. Top fender of the doors. And part of the fender has a clear delineating. So I'll need to touch up a red on that before we clear it as well. The fender looks good. I think it can bring that back to the same direction. So Doc, what are we doing color to clear all that? I took some time for repaired scratches on the bumper and get them ready for me. I already have a full video from the $500 Toyota Camry where she'll have a pair of damaged bumpers and paint to match. So I'll put a link to that property in the description to try and keep this video short. Without doing the top edge of your doors, I'll just pull off this trim. Give you the choice of mask, knock, or removing trim. It's all better to remove your paint you can and avoid the tape line. This trim is a rough tape anyways. So, I'll show this in a future video. So, this game. Look at doing it before I put it back on the car. Mm -hmm. Hey, we are back at it. I had to take a break to work on another project. I just gave the car another bath to wash off any dust or dirt from sitting in the pool bar. And today, I'm going to be doing some wet sanding. I ordered some wet and dry sandpaper. I'll put a link in the description. 
And this is 800 grit. I have a couple sanding blocks here, but for this job, I'm going to use these two. We'll look at those in a minute. I'm going to be wet sanding the entire surface with the 800 grit paper, including this area. This needs to be a smooth, flat transition from clear to no clear. I'm going to do my best to blend all this with red touch-up aerosol cans before I re-clear the entire hood. Same with this fender and roof. The tops of the doors will be laminated. All these areas need to be seen with 800 grit. For a flat area, I'm using this stiffer block. This flexible sponge to wrap tape around the block and rub it in the water. Then start sanding back and forth. When you see the water is turning white, that's a clear coat being removed from the 800 grit. Look, you got some color on there too. That's from the area that didn't have any clear coat. Give it a dunk every minute and uh, drop some water on the surface to keep things wet. It's good to switch up the direction too. It seems to see it a little faster and more even. You can see all this pink water? That's the red color combined with the white hair. I want to make sure I get this delaminated area all the way smooth. It can take a while. The paper loses some grit after a while, so I'm flipping it around. So there's a fresh side facing out. And that will have more bite than the deep area. Now 800 sands kind of fast. The lower the number, the it is. If the paper is too low, it'll leave scratches too deep that won't be filled in by the paint, and you'll see them when the paint's all done. If I use too high of a grit, there won't be enough scratches in the surface for the new paint to bite to, and I run the risk of the paint not bonding well and peeling in the future. So 800 is kind of the sweet spot. Take a look at this. This is the factory primer showing beneath the red. The color color isn't very thick on most vehicles compared to the clear. And that's alright because I'm going to spray more color. But if your clear isn't enamating like mine is, then you don't need to respray the color before applying new clear. So you don't want to go this far. The transition and the delimited area is feeling pretty smooth now. I've got these tiny spots that still need sanded though. In and about. Watch this. And there you go. This area in the middle here is good to go. It looks like there are still dots, but they aren't white dots where the figure is lifting. It's actually those areas of delamination where I've sanded smooth, and now you can see where the color is faded in those spots. So, feel it with your fingers, because although it may not look smooth, it might be perfect. Like, all oh, this is smooth, even though it looks squashy. This does make a mess. Strawberry milkshake. Now, I just have to sand the rest of the hood. When it comes to these curved areas of the hood, I can't sand these evenly with a rigid block, or else I'll only sand the top edge. That's where I'm going to use this flexible sanding sponge that I showed earlier. Wrap it up, just like I did with the block, and it flexes to match this contour. I'll have links in the description for the sanding block and this sponge. So back and forth in different directions. Don't forget the very corner. Just be careful on edges because they're very easy to sand through. It's natural to apply more pressure on an edge or any raised area that isn't flat. I'm actually using an older piece of 800 grit right now because a used piece of sandpaper doesn't cut as fast as a brand new sheet. That kind of 
gives me a little more room for air. This back edge rolls over, so I'm very lucky sanding that contour. Be careful not to go through it. But it does need to be sanded for the paint you bond well. It doesn't take much pressure when there's so little surface area. One more pass with my fingers, just in case I missed any area, sponge, and the very corner. Clean this off a little and let it dry. Okay, this is dry now, and you can see, well, the finger's wet. If you look close, you can see a thin line on the edge that didn't get sanded well. It looks a little darker because it gets stuffed up. I'm going to hit that part real quick with the 800. Everything has to be sanded so the new clear coat sticks. I couldn't tell when it was all wet, but once it dries, it's easy to see any area that didn't get sanded well. And again, I'm doing this with old, dull paper, so it's less likely that I'll sand through the red edge. Throw some water on the hood. And I can use the sponge and the squeegee to remove some of this sanding residue. And dry the surface. And that will help me see if I missed any areas when I sand it.
where the nuclear fade into each other. So the nuclear will start heavy and then fade into the factory clear. And the blender smooths out the transition from new to old clear for a seamless transition. I've already sanded with 800 grit. Next I'll do 1,000, then 1,200, then 1,500. And finally 2,000 all the way down this Z filler to the factory clear. Then, as I'm clearing this, I'll fade it out towards the bottom. Then, spray the blender on that transition area. Like I said, I've never used this stuff before, but I did a lot of research and a lot of painters swear by it. So, we'll see how it works. This can was about $20 ship on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I'll be using the blender on the eight colors as well. Down where they heat the rest of the glue up in. It's important to mark the area with each grit so I can tell when they start to finish for an even transition on both sides. And I was talking to pull this body line. All this trim around the window is staying on because they're held on with little plastic clips. So I'm imagining off all those with tape. This car has a lot of trim, but the rest is easy to mask up. The lights and grill, I'll pull it underneath the bumper. Already popped the corner light out when I stand it. Pull the chrome trim so I don't have to mask that. Already put the lift off the bumper. Try to put the tape line where I can. But there's some things that just aren't worth taking part on a car this old when flat clips get really with age. So the paper I'm using for the wind area is 800 grit, then 1000 grit. Then 1200 grit, then 1500 grit, and finally 2000 grit, which is fine enough to count out with the right compound. Well, then you can see the strain of the tears. Cool cut, delicious and simple. And you might take a catch of it. You might want to fly this up somewhere. I'm used to it. I'm not next. Now, in the back. First, I'm the tape over the chrome trim, plug with the scratch and with the sandpaper. Then I stand in each area of my saw with the corresponding sandpaper from 800 to 2000 grit. And let it dry to check for any lost areas that I might have missed. I've washed this car more times in the past few weeks than it's been washed in the past decade. We're getting it all cleaned up. I'm about ready to paint it now. How it looks right now when it's wet. It's exactly how it's going to look in a fresh clear coat. Of course, I'm thinking with some fresh color. Look at that smooth glass finish. That's what I'm keeping for. Hopefully it looks that good when I'm all done. This metallic red is called Persian Red Pearl. It really pops in the sun. All right, I've got the car back in the garage. I want to pick it up one more time to make sure it's ready to mask off. I've got the bumpers over there. I'll start with those. These old Honda bumpers need a lot of masking because they're not fully painted from the factory. So I use a variety of different pieces of tape. This tape is probably the best because it's like plastic. So it really adheres to the surface a little better than your typical paper masking tape. Like the blue tape roll, you might find it a hard to store. It's made by 3M Scotch, and it's designed for automotive use. It's not cheap, but it works awesome because it's easy to make a curve as it goes down. I'll put links in the description. The really thin 1 8 inch tape is great for the curved areas. Then, once I have the edge mask, I put on a regular piece of tape with paper over that. The bottom of the bumper isn't even visible when the lift installed, but I don't want to see red holes break every time I'm under there changing the oil. Next, I wipe the bumpers down with some wax and grease remover. I use TPG DX330 in a lot of other videos, but I'm almost out, so I use some print ball, which seems to work just well over TPG and is only about one third of the price. I'll put a link for the print ball in the description. Next, I wipe down all the surfaces on the vehicle of the painting as well. Good, roof. And bender. Check this out. I messed up here, but now I can show you how to fix the common mistake. 
back there plastic. I see it all the way through the paint and primer. It happened in a few spots where there were high points. And paint doesn't bond to plastic. So I've got some adhesion promoter to fix that. Make sure it's spraying nice first. All right. And just a quick spray. That's all you need. Here we go. Quick spray. And good. Done. 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 It's clear. It dries fast. And it makes paint on the plastic. This is a great product. I'll put a link in the description. In addition to those areas of plastic showing, I also have some body color showing. This white area here. The gray is acrylic primer. But I'm going to use some primer too over this because sometimes color coat can appear splotchy over body color. Primer sealer will give consistent results on the base coat, aka color. Primer sealer is a good idea over a surface of the bumper. I'll put the link for this in the description as well. Do a light coat here. Light coat here. Anywhere I see that body color showing through. This bumper was pretty beat up. So I'm just hitting the repair areas quick to get a uniform surface. Then I apply the second coat. Next, I hose down the floor and squeak it out all the water to remove any dirt or dust that can pick up when I'm painting. I went over all the steps to convert the residential garage into a paint booth to have sprayed the four edge parts last year. I'll put a link to that video in the description. Then I mask off all the areas of the car along the painting. I'm going to talk about the painting using. When you're painting an entire vehicle, you will like to invest in some nasty paper. It's going to be the size more, and it's a lot easier, faster, and cleaner than newspaper. If you plan on painting more than a couple times, it's worth it. I'll put some links in the description. Okay, the whole part is masked off. You saw I just ran it under the hood. Everywhere else is taped off. I used the 1 8 inch for the curves. The thicker tape for the straight areas. Take up all the seams. Don't worry, you over spray. Picture on the stand.
I can't do shit right to get any depressants Illness and welfare rob my adolescence My friends probably hate me, can't answer a message Filled with anxiety, always be hiding me Feeling inadequate, it's always what's driving me Not a role model, that's not what I strive to be Can't go outside, I'm afraid to be finding me Paranoid about my privacy, yeah And they always asking questions about my face Can't relate, fucking caught my own reflection Broke a mirror the other day Got a lot of bad shit that I'm taking to my grave Got a fucking date with death on house arrest till trial day So I grab the red wine on rainy days And then I pour it cause I'll age another fucking thousand days Before I know it, yeah I spend them all inside Waste my time while I'm scrolling what I love when it rains Cause I'm agoraphobic Into morning coffee, and through the hours talking. I like me better without me. I like me better without me. I'm here for the first time. I stay for a long time, guys. I like me better without me. I like me better without me. Can you imagine that in um flash day? They um revealed Barry's identity. Army Tiger. Hey, have I played that? No. Let's try this. Again. You better when I'm with you.
strength, money, clout, and fame, a disease, a plague. We all love to hate, have to play the game, have to make a name. All our insecurities are on this display. This is war with the enemy. Think that it was meant to be. Living in a time where disease is on every screen. I won't let them fester me. I know most are festering. Negativity is a plague for the mentally weak. No mercy, all I got is working. Never stop searching, never quit the thirst. I'm toxic and psychotic, but this logic, you can't stop it. It's been chronic since I was a boy, so neurotic and chaotic. Let's go! Oh, Jesus.
predicted. Someone better get in there and predict now. I don't want people to lose points to nothing. Someone quickly press it. Oh my god, no, I think he's going to the raid. I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> 